ビルアンドリュース博士ですどうぞ
And that'll be the solution to this problem. <clears throat> now, this is where I'm at. This is, I want to solve this, these kind of problems. I have my whole life. Oh, this is a picture of my father and me before he passed away in 2015. And I want to point out that my passion to cure aging came from him. This was his passion. <clears throat> and though he can't benefit from it anymore, there's still 150,000 people in the world dying every day. And most of these deaths are due to age-related ailments. Almost every disease now has been connected in some way to aging. And <clears throat> now estimates have come along saying that if we could solve the aging problem, half of us will be alive in a thousand years from now. Just because accidents and things like that just don't account for that much death relative to what aging does. So this is a, a really big issue, something I'd like to see happen. We're aging, we all assume it's just natural. Let's, let's all get old and die. It's been the way it's always been, but I don't think we should let it continue that way. It's, it's the worst disease the planet's ever seen. Well, so <clears throat> after my father got me really interested in doing this, was, I was 10 years old. I remember I was very interested in science and medicine. And he came out to the front lawn one time when I was looking through my telescope, and he said, Bill, since you're so interested in science and medicine, when you grow up, you should become a doctor and find a cure for aging. And he said, I don't know why nobody's done this yet. And, but that fascinated me. And I thought, yeah, this is what I want to do. Well, so through high school, college, I did everything I could to learn about aging. And the big problem that I ran into is that everybody thought we were no different than old trucks sitting in a field that age because of the weather, the sun, the rain, the wind was causing us to age. And then other environmental, mostly in external and internal environmental things, were causing us to age. But I just didn't understand that. that. If that was true, why would people that live in the North and South Poles age at essentially the same rate as people who live in the equator, where the environments are very different? And why would cats and dogs age at different rates than humans when they're in the same environment? This just didn't add up for me. Something more had to be going on than just environmental changes. Another thing is, yes, you know, the sun damages a truck, and it also damages us. When we get sunburn, that kills cells on our skin. But humans are better than trucks because we have other cells that can divide to replace those cells. A truck can't do that. So again, you would think we shouldn't be aging just from the weather because of the fact that we have the ability to repair damage. Well, that's not necessarily true anymore. <clears throat> and now, we've known for a long time that when you take cells and grow it in a Petri dish, this is a graph showing uh, days in culture. On the bottom axis and the top axis is the number of cell divisions that have occurred. When you take human cells and grow them in a Petri dish, they're really not different than growing bacteria or some other kind of organism. They pretty much grow at a linear rate. And before the 1960s, everybody thought human cells would just continue on like this forever. But in 1961, it was discovered that human cells don't grow indefinitely. They actually level off. I personally thought this was one of the most exciting breakthroughs of all time because, hey, this might explain something about the aging process. And I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. But first, let me say this is called the Hayflick Limit, named after the guy that discovered this, Leonard Hayflick. What he saw was really interesting. He saw that when he took cells, let's say skin cells, keratinocytes or fibroblasts from a 10-year-old kid, he could get them to divide 55 times before those cells reached the Hayflick limit. When he took cells from a 50-year-old, they could only divide 35 times. And when he took cells from a 90-year-old, they could only divide about 15 times. Well, what's going on here? When a cell divides, isn't it true that when a cell divides and everything inside that gets duplicated and to make two daughter cells, those two daughter cells are identical to the parent cell. 
well, how could the daughter cells know that they've already divided a certain number of times? What's going on here? <clears throat> Somehow these cells know how old they are. There's some kind of counting mechanism that's occurring inside of human cells that lets a cell know how many times it has divided already and how many more times it can divide. Well, what kind of mechanism could exist for doing that in a human cell? And I started thinking, you know, it's kind of like ride tickets at an amusement park. You go, to, you go to an amusement park, you get a bunch of ride tickets. Your mother gives you 20 tickets, let's say. Well, you have 20 rides. Go to a ride, you give the uh, ride manager a ticket, and you, you have 19. Go on another ride, you have 18. Well, now you can look and you say, well, I've been on two rides, and I have 18 rides left. Maybe something like that is occurring inside of our cells. Well, it was frustrating. It was now getting to be 19, uh, 1980, and I had been uh, just getting, getting my PhD about that time, and I'm really looking forward into figuring out what these ride tickets are. But everywhere I go, everybody's got some theories about Asian that have nothing to do with ride tickets. And nobody could, and I couldn't think of anything, and nobody else could, about what could these ride tickets be. So I spent 10 years in biotech doing cancer research and a little bit of heart disease research and inflammation research, but I really focused a lot on cancer research, and I'll come back to that too again later. But then in 1992, and well, during this whole time I'm doing this cancer research, I was attending aging conferences to see if anybody had any idea of something that could be these ride tickets. And in 1992, Dr. Calvin Harley gave a talk. He told everybody about the ride tickets being at the very tips of our chromosomes, called telomeres. He was saying that he can measure those, he can see how many persons have, he can tell you how many times your cells divide, he can tell you how, many, how old you are, and more importantly, he could tell you how long it'll be before you die of old age just by measuring the length of the tips of your chromosomes and looking at the number of ride tickets that are there. So the title of my talk today is because I want to figure out how to manipulate that length. I want to make it longer, short, you know, I don't want to make it short, I want to make it longer to make us healthier. So novel telomere therapies now and in the future. That is what my business is all about, trying to find ways to lengthen telomeres and make us all better. Now, I've been in, I'm right now the president of Sierra Sciences. I'm also the founder of the company, a biotech company in Reno, Nevada. Um, I'm also the honorary chairman of the Institute for Advanced Telomere Medicine here in Tokyo. I've been in, I, I've been in biotech for 36 years. I'm only in the last 25 years I've been a, really a telomere biologist. But I've been a medical, medical researcher all along, focusing a lot on cancer, heart disease, inflammation, I have 50 plus US issued patents on the subject of telomeres and some other things too. I was awarded second place for United States Inventor of the Year, and it was in 1997, for my research in cancer and, and cancer and telomeres and telomerase. I was featured in a movie documentary along with uh, Dr. Aubrey de Grey called The Immortalist. I highly recommend it. It's a good movie. It's actually almost won an Oscar. I'm also an author of two books, Curing Aging and Telomere Lengthening. Telomere Lengthening is actually just being launched now, th later this week, I think. And I'm an ultra marathon runner, along with my wife here. We're both ultra marathon runners. We both believe that long distance exercise is the best thing you can do to extend your lifespan and your health span as long as possible. As long as you're not one of those people that cross finish lines on your hands and knees throwing up, <laughs> you are probably doing yourself a great service by doing endurance exercise. I've had a lot of accomplishments in my biotech career. I've been involved in a, a lot of the big blockbusters that occurred, including human growth hormone, renin, tissue plasminogen activator, erythropoietin, that was the drug that Lance Armstrong used to cheat. We originally developed it to improve blood, uh, red blood cells uh, levels in people that were anemic, but became a, a sports enhancing drug too. Uh, thrombomodulin, osteoinductive factor, beta serum, the very first treatment for multiple sclerosis. I played a role in developing that. And then most lately, telomerase. So I've had a 
very successful career in biotech. And uh, I'm now applying it towards my number one interest, which is curing aging. So <clears throat> I know that Dr. Raphael already went over some of the basics. And we, we decided that we, there would be some redundancy in our talks. And that's because it'd be good, I thought, to hear the same things from the medical doctor perspective and also from the science, research scientist perspective, which are very different. So, <clears throat> though we, we agree on 99%. Let me, let me just go through the basics of telomere biology. And that's, you know, telomeres are very small things inside of us. And to understand what they are, we need to zoom in on a human being. And we find that a human is made up of 100 trillion cells. And most of the theories about why we age say that we age because our cells age. And so this is where we really need to target first. What can we do to stop the aging process in our cells? That's practically all we do at my company, Sierra Sciences. When we zoom in on a cell, we find that every cell contains a nucleus. And inside the nuclei are found our chromosomes. The blue things shown there are the chromosomes, which have all of our genes that give us our eye color, our hair color. And if we zoom in on one chromosome, we find that a chromosome is made up of two arms, a top arm and a bottom arm. Inside of each of those arms is a long DNA molecule, like, like beads on a string. The beads are called bases. And a typical DNA molecule is about 100 million bases in length. And along these beads, the bases, are the genes that give us our hair color and eye color and, and lots of other things. Well, at the very tips of these chromosomes are the telomeres. That's where the telomeres are, shown here in yellow. I want you to think of this long DNA like a shoelace. And the telomeres are equivalent to the caps or the aglets on your shoelaces. So telomeres play a protective role, such as Dr. Raphael said, play a pr protective role to make certain that the DNA doesn't get damaged. And boy, when they get short, do our DNA gets very damaged. So now, I mentioned that the chromosome, the DNA in the chromosome, is 100 million bases in length. The telomere, if we zoom in on the telomere now, is 15,000 bases in length, at least when we're first conceived. And here's where all the troubles begin. The problem that we have, the reason why we all age and have declining health, is because as soon as our cells start to divide, each and every time our cells divide, the telomeres get a little bit shorter. So going from a single cell embryo to a newborn baby is a lot of cell division. So during that time, our telomeres will shorten from 15,000 bases down to 10,000 bases. When you're born, your telomeres are typically around 10,000 bases in length. But the problem doesn't end there. The problem gets worse because you still have a lot of cell division to go, a lot of growing to go. And so through your life, your telomeres, you have lots of cell division, your telomeres get shorter and shorter. And when your telomeres get down to 5,000 bases, your cells lose the ability to function and you die of old age. And that's what telomere biology is all about. Let me first review that again, because this is important. You're conceived at 15,000 bases, you're born at 10,000 bases, and you die of old age at 5,000 bases. This is not a theory anymore. This is very well established. Every single scientist that does any work with human cells in petri dishes and growing them know that those cells can only divide a certain number of times and the number of times those cells can divide is based on the length of the telomere. And I'll tell you, research scientists, among everybody else, would love to find a way to keep the telomeres from shortening so that they could continue working in their experiments longer than they are. And <clears throat> there's absolutely nothing right now that we can do to stop this telomere shortening. Well, at least not yet. I'm going to be talking about some stuff that are, is pretty exciting. But <clears throat> No matter what you do, no matter how much you exercise, no matter how much you uh, <clears throat> uh, eat, how, uh, eat correctly, how, and no matter how much you take the, all the right medicines, there's nothing you can do to stop this telomere shortening. 
And now we know that this affects almost every disease you've ever heard of. It's been over the time when we first started this research, we thought it'd be aging, but now we're finding a common theme. Every time you have any kind of disease that has anything to do with causing cells to divide, that causes telomeres to shorten at an accelerated rate. And as a result, you end up suffering from short telomere diseases uh, at a younger age than somebody who isn't suffering from the disease. I could spend an hour going through all these, and I'm not going to today, but <clears throat> there, I wish I had, but you can count on the fact that almost every disease you can search in the scientifically peer-reviewed journal studies and find that there's a connection between that disease and telomeres. I like to think about telomere and lengthening as a tug-of-war. It's my best way to explain a lot of the phenomena that we see in this. So in this tug-of-war, we have shorteners and we have lengtheners. And the problem, the problem in all of our cells is that we only have shorteners. We have no lengtheners. So it's a one-sided tug-of-war. We have all these people pulling to shorten our telomeres, and this is going on through our whole life, and it's causing us to age and have declining health. Now, there are things we can do, and most of these are like improve our lifestyle, better eating habits, better exercise, more exercise. We can do things to reduce the number of people pulling, but we can only reduce it to a certain place. That's where we have like two people. I call this basal level telomere shortening. This is the shortest, slowest we can have our telomere shortening go. And what I showed before, I call accelerated telomere shortening. That's more spelled out right here. So when we have four people pulling, that's equivalent to accelerated telomere shortening because they're shortening the telomeres faster. When we get down to two, that's called basal level telomere shortening because that's the slowest we can make our telomeres go. If you have the perfect diet, lead the perfect lifestyle, have the perfect genetics, your telomeres will be shortening at the slowest rate possible, and you can live 125 years before your telomeres will be so short that you die no matter what your lifestyle was. <clears throat> Only two people have ever exceeded 20, 120 years in recorded history, but uh, I, I hope that someday we're going to see people exceeding that when we figure out a way to uh, increase the telomere lengths. So <clears throat> there are things that you can do now, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these. Exercise, antioxidants, Dr. Raphael talked about these too, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, don't smoke, don't be obese, reduce stress, reduce depression, reduce pessimism. Nothing new. <laughs> You've all heard this many times before your whole lives. These are things we've always known. But now, now we can say, well, they, they affect the telomere length too. And so maybe that's really important. But one thing is, these are things everybody can do now, and I recommend it. It's do everything you can to keep your telomeres as long as possible, just so you'll be still round and healthy when better things come along to help us keep our telomeres longer. If you, as I said, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time, but I highly recommend this book. If you wanna learn more, read The Telomere Effect by Elizabeth Blackburn and Lisa Eppel. It's the how-to book to learn how to shorten the rate of your telomere shortening as much as possible. It was just launched uh, or uh, published this earlier this year. And the key author there for this particular subject is Elisa Eppel, who is, in my opinion, the world's leading expert on things you can do now, lifestyle things that you can do now to keep your telomeres as long as possible. So this is, I think, the go-to book. <clears throat> now, let's, let's see if we can do even better than that. This is what my research is all about. How do we go from this, which is basal level telomere shortening, to actually getting somebody on the other side of that tug of war to lengthen the, to lengthen the telomeres? Well, that's where this enzyme telomerase comes in. Telomerase, I led the research at Geron Corporation that discovered this enzyme in humans. <clears throat> it's what's shown here is a green squiggly thing is the DNA molecule. At the very end of the DNA is telomerase, shown here as a factory that's adding telomeres to the end of this chromosome. Now, where is this enzyme? How come our telomeres are shortening if this enzyme exists? Well, it turns out it's only found in our reproductive cells, and more specifically, our primordial germ cells. And the reason why it's there 
is because if it wasn't, our children would be born with shorter telomeres than we have. And their children would be born with shorter telomeres than they have, on and on, and we would have been extinct as a species after three or four generations. But because we need to survive, our reproductive cells produce this enzyme called telomerase to keep the telomeres from shortening. And it's found only in our reproductive cells. Now, as Dr. Raphael said, <clears throat> there are some rumors going around now that telomerase actually causes cancer. Now, I want to kind of go on a tangent here from my regular talk, and I'll come back to this. Because at this point, now that I'm introducing this enzyme telomerase, uh, I want to I talk about does telomerase actually cause cancer? And <clears throat> it's, it's, it's something that people have thought before has been discredited as not, not true. But now this book that I just praised has come out, and the other author, Elizabeth Blackburn, Nobel Prize winner, is saying that telomerase causes cancer. Okay, well, she's, she's said this before. It, I've never let it bother me, but it's, um, it's now getting to be pretty well, uh, are, people are getting to know this, hear this. And so I want to discuss this. It's not true. Long telomeres do not cause cancer. Um, <clears throat> this is, it kind of makes me mad to hear this. It, it kind of attacks everything I stand for for the last 25 years. I've believed ever since I've learned about telomeres that lengthening them was a way to, to uh, um, make us healthier and younger and actually decrease the risk of cancer. So my book that's come out, I do talk about telomeres and cancer too, but I say that short telomeres cause cancer, not long telomeres. I also say that the lack of telomerase causes cancer. We've known that forever. We know that we're all getting cancer already. Cancer is a, practically the number one killer, if not the number one killer. It's cardiovascular disease might be. I get them backward. But, but cancer is a major killer of us all. We already get cancer, and it's because of the lack of telomerase. And it's because of short telomeres, and that telomerase actually, when we put telomerase, it actually decreases the risk of cancer. Why some people like Elizabeth Blackburn don't know this, I don't know. I'm sure they do. I, I just can't understand why they're saying that long telomeres cause cancer. And it's not, it's not everybody that thinks so. In fact, many, many scientists are exactly opposed to what Elizabeth Blackburn is saying. And, and a friend of mine, uh, <clears throat> uh, Lenhard Rudolph, has now also published a book, just came out a week ago, and it says the same thing that my book says. It's the lack of telomeres that causes cancer. It's the short telomeres that cause cancer. Long telomeres are going to decrease the risk of cancer. So, it only gets worse because I've heard that just night before last, here in Tokyo on NHK, is it NHK? Yeah, NHK TV, that Elizabeth Blackburn was on TV announcing that telomerase causes cancer. Well, because she has a Nobel Prize, people believe she knows what she's talking about when she says that. And I want to just spend some time to just prove to you that telomerase doesn't cause cancer. And you heard Dr. Joseph Raphael also say the same thing. Telomerase doesn't cause cancer. It's the lack of telomerase that causes cancer. We've known that for a long, long time. So I want to just go through some history here. Um, Leonard Hayflick first showed that cells know how old they are back in 1961. Uh, then people started figuring out uh, that telomeres actually shorten back around 1971. That's when it was first proposed that they shortened, and people looked, and sure enough, they could see that telomeres were shortening. Then in 1984, Elizabeth Blackburn and her colleague Carol Greider discovered this enzyme in a pond scum organism called tetrahymena that lengthened telomeres. As I'll show you in a minute, they, they made no connection to cancer or aging. They weren't cancer aging researchers. They weren't aging researchers. They were pond scum organism tetrahymena researchers. This is what they did, and, and I'll show some excerpts from the documentary that make this clear. But they never connected the dots. They, never, they made this discovery published in 1984, but never connected the dots that this had anything to do with aging or cancer. 
It wasn't until 1990, approximately, when Dr. Calvin Harley first wrote a paper called The Telomere Hypothesis of Aging, where he said that, boy, you know, maybe telomeres have something to do with aging. Well, one of the first things he did is he, he contacted these Nobel Prize winners. Well, they, of course, they weren't Nobel Prize winners at the time. They were still working on their tetrahymena. And he, he asked them if they would help the company he was working with discover telomerase in human cells. And they worked for two years and were unable to discover this enzyme equivalent in humans. So Calvin and his company, Geron Corporation, contracted or brought me in. And I discovered human telomerase, my team. In medical research, there's no such thing as one person making a discovery. And I want to make that really clear when I talk about the Nobel Prize. But my team that I led <coughs> discovered human telomerase in three months. And look what happened. This is showing publications on the subjects of telomeres and telomerase from 1960 on. And you can see that when tetrahymena telomerase there was no, publications are essentially zero or one every year. But you can see, as soon as we discovered telomerase in humans, the number of publications in the field just skyrocketed. My team then went and showed that when we take what's called the antisense, I want the translators to get that right, the antisense of telomerase, when we put that into cancer cells, it killed every cancer cell and it had no effect on normal cells. So this was a major discovery. And in fact, this is the reason why I was awarded second place for United States Inventor of the Year for this discovery. Then, then we discovered that telomerase, putting telomerase into cells, would extend that Hayflick limit. Remember I showed you the cells actually can grow for a certain time and then level off? Well, they don't do that when telomerase is lengthened into telomeres. It was the first proof ever that telomeres caused aging. Before, even when I listened to Calvin Harley speak in 1991, I think, it was 1992, nobody knew was telomere shortening a result of aging or a cause of aging. A lot of people thought it was just a result of aging, the same as the caps on your shoelaces. They, they get short as a result of aging. But this proved that telomere shortening was the cause of aging because when we lengthen them, the cells not only live longer, they started, we saw signs of age reversal in every way imaginable. Okay, all these publications and these major discovery of human telomerase, the cure for possible cancer, the cure for possible aging, all this, the Nobel Prize Committee said, somebody has to get a Nobel Prize for this. And Nobel Prizes are always awarded to the people that originate a field. There's no such thing as somebody being totally responsible for a discovery. So when a big medical discovery gets made, the Nobel Prize is always awarded back to whoever originated that. In this case, it was the discoverers of tetrahymena, telomerase. Elizabeth Blackburn and Carol Greider, along with Jack Sostak, who worked with Elizabeth Blackburn on the study of telomeres also. So, so congratulations to them for getting the Nobel Prize. It's, it's an honor to be part of the field. But it was a few years later that, for the first time, that actually somebody, Dr. Ron DePinnell, and, and Dr. Raphael talked about Dr. Ron DePinnell, actually turned old mice into young mice by lengthening the telomeres. This is the first time, as, as Dr. Raphael said, the first time that anybody had ever reversed aging in a mammal. <clears throat> I mean, so it's getting better and better. We, I mean, when we start doing this in humans and we see 80-year-olds start coming out young like these mice did, that's going to be a major medical breakthrough. And we're still in the research stage there. <clears throat> so I want to talk about Elizabeth Blackburn for a minute. As I said, she's the Nobel Prize winner in 2009. And she got the Nobel Prize for the discovery of how chromosomes are protected by telomeres and the enzyme telomerase. She didn't get the Nobel Prize for discovering telomerase and tetrahymena. She got the Nobel Prize for showing the importance of the role of telomeres and telomerase. She didn't discover the human enzyme, which was important. She discovered the enzyme in the single cell pond scum organism called tetrahymena. <clears throat> and 
the research had nothing to do with cancer and aging. Okay, let me talk about my background. I've been a cancer researcher since 1981. I've been involved in many research areas and many types of cancers. I've been involved in many different targets. I've been involved in developing uh, uh, products that have been in clinical studies. Some are actually on the market now for fighting cancer. And as I said, I was second place for United States Inventor of the Year for my cancer research. Even though I'm considered an anti-aging scientist, my award was for my cancer research. I'm a very qualified cancer researcher. I'm probably one of the most qualified, one of the, in, the, in the field of telomere biology, I probably have more experience in cancer research than anybody else I know. So what I want to do is I want to show some excerpts from a documentary called The Immortal, called Immortal. Uh, this was an Emmy awarded, won an Emmy award in 2012, a very good documentary, but it features me, Elizabeth Blackburn, and Carol Greider. And I just want to hear, listen, let you listen to what they have to say. Throughout time, we mortals have gone to remarkable lengths trying to stop the aging process, seeking to delay death, if not avoid it altogether. Now, as astonishing as it may seem, science has uncovered a key to endless youth, an elixir of life itself. discovered deep within the cells of a tiny pond creature. Far from fiction, in 2009, its discovery won this Australian-born scientist a Nobel Prize. She hadn't been seeking immortality at all. It was just this wish to get at the bottom of how life works. We were just trying to understand how it is that chromosome ends can be maintained through uh, each round of cell division. So there was no uh, thought about human diseases, um, cellular senescence, cancer, uh, degenerative diseases. All of those uh, came later. So it was really curiosity-driven science. But we did know that understanding something very fundamental in the cell, like how a chromosome replicates, would have important implications, but we just didn't know what those implications might be. We wanted to understand life, and we wanted to see, is this really a process happening at the ends of chromosomes which nobody has ever seen before, or what? It was just this wish to get at the bottom of how life works. Let me pause the video there for a second and just say that they weren't looking at cancer and aging at all. This was not their field of background at all. <clears throat> they, and, and they were just looking to see how life works. And now let me continue this video. They had unknowingly uncovered the secret to endless life in cells. Now the question was, could it work in people? Dr. Bill Andrews of Sierra Sciences is testing a range of possible telomerase boosters. The main reason why we should be taking anti-aging research serious now is because for the first time ever, there's been proof of concept, proof of principle experiments that have been done where uh, they've never existed before, but where we've actually done things like make human cells in a petri dish immortal. We're, we're way beyond the hope now because we actually have a target preventing the telomere shortening. So <clears throat> there is this misunderstanding by some, including Elizabeth Blackburn, that telomerase and long telomeres cause cancer. Now, what I want to explain is what they're misunderstanding. Why is it they're misunderstanding this? Because it's not the first time that they have actually misunderstood this. For originally, it got started because remember I, I told you that my team showed that if we inhibited telomerase with the antisense, we inhibited telomerase, we killed cancer cells. Well, a lot of people said, wow, if inhibiting telomerase kills cancer, then, can then telomerase must be the cause of that cancer. 
But that was discredited years ago, simply on the basis, that's like saying glucose causes cancer because cancer grows better in the presence of glucose. It wasn't, and as Dr. Raphael did a very good job of explaining the difference between something helping that cell to be healthy versus actually making it into a cancer. But then people, including Elizabeth Blackburn, started saying, well, why did we evolve telomere shortening? When we, we, we know now that our reproductive cells produce telomerase. It doesn't make any sense that we would then shut that gene off to produce telomerase so that when we grow up, our telomerase gets shorter. Why would we do that? It, there has to be some evolutionary benefit to doing that. And what they said, it must be an anti-cancer mechanism. This is where Dr. Raphael said I would probably challenge him. I believe from an evolutionary perspective that telomeres are long enough, this is not just a belief, this is a fact, telomeres are long enough that if a cell in your body gets cancer, that cancer will kill you many times over before the telomeres get short enough to actually senesce. So even in the absence of telomerase, the cancers are still going to kill you. And that's, that's one of the important things to remember. It's not an anti-cancer mechanism. In fact, from an evolutionary perspective, evolution doesn't want us living longer than it takes to raise our young. After we raise our young, every successful species since the beginning of evolution, every successful species had a, had a better chance of surviving if it kills off the old because in order to shuffle the genes, you have to allow the offspring to breed. And if the old, that are more mature and more experienced, don't get feeble and unable to perform, they will never allow the offspring to breed. So every successful species, almost every, there are some exceptions and I'm gonna mention some, almost every successful species has evolved a way to eliminate the old. And almost every evolutionary biologist will tell you, and my PhD is actually partially in evolutionary biology. So, so we created, we shut off the telomerase gene. After we're out of our reproductive cells, we shut off the telomerase gene as a pro-death mechanism. It's humans' way of killing off the old. This is now, so in our ancestors, very pre-human, when we had a rapidly changing environment, it was very important to shuffle the genes as much as possible. Dogs, cats, horses, sheep, pig, and deer, and I'll go, I probably went that too fast for you guys. <laughs> They're shaking their heads, yes. Dogs, cats, horses, sheep, pig, and deer are the only animals that we've ever discovered that age by telomere shortening. Rodents, such as mice, they don't age by telomere shortening at all. The studies that Dr. Ron DePennell did, he did them on engineered mice. They were made to age like humans. <clears throat> so other animals developed other mechanisms of aging. Mice, roundworms, fruit flies, and yeast, they don't age by telomere shortening. They age by oxidative stress and mitochondria dysfunction. I know this is, am I going too fast for you guys? Okay. The, uh, <clears throat> and so, so it's not, it's not just humans that have done this. Every species almost has figured out a way to get rid of the old, and they've done it by even different mechanisms. Humans just do it by telomere shortening. That, that ended up making that whole idea disappear a long time ago too. But now this new thing that Dr. Raphael talked about, <clears throat> genome-wide association studies, has just popped up. And, okay, I'm gonna call this the new toy in town. This is, a lot of times new things come along, like a technique called PCR came along one day. And then every lab in the world starts doing everything they can with PCR to publish as many papers as they can as possible. And this is now happening with genome-wide association studies. It's a new toy. Scientists are publishing. You'll find all the studies have like 50 authors because you get a lot of people involved. And they're making all these discoveries and publishing them. And, you know, 80% of them are going to be refuted later on. It's just too fast, and it's, it's, the people doing these studies 
are not experts in the area that they're studying. They're not experts in, for instance, cancer or heart disease, where they're doing these studies or other diseases. They're experts in being able to look at genes. So here's one paper, as I said, 50 authors. You can see all these authors down here. I can't even get them all on the screen. This paper came out recently. I think Joseph Raphael, Dr. Raphael showed the same slide. They say long telomeres cause cancer. Another study also came out, and Elizabeth Blackburn refer, refers to these studies when she says telomerase causes cancer. Well, what is genome-wide association studies? And to explain that, I need to first start off with explaining what single nucleotide polymorphisms are, or abbreviated SNPs, S-N-P-S. So when you look at people's chromosomes, now that we can sequence people's whole chromosomes, we see that we take two people, we see that their chromosomes are pretty much 99.9% .9 identical. But every once in a while, we'll find two bases, or one place, where the bases, they're, they're different bases. The, these G's, C's, A's, and T's are bases in DNA. Such a thing, when they find something like that, that's called a SNP. And so what's happened <clears throat> is that Genome-wide association study has now taken this database that's been created of SNPs and started asking questions. How is it associated with certain diseases? So they're just taking, they're, they're screening hundreds of thousands of different people, looking at for these SNPs, and then comparing them to all of their medical records to find out what kind of diseases they had and things like that, to see if there's any correlations between the presence of SNPs and certain diseases. Well, during this process, they found about eight or nine SNPs that seem to be correlated with long telomeres. People with those SNPs end up having longer telomeres. No explanation as to why, but these little changes in the DNA were somehow resulting in longer telomeres. And then what happened just recently, and which has caused a lot of stir, is that some few, few papers came out and said that the same SNPs that are resulting in longer telomeres are also increasing the risk of cancer. Okay, okay so that's, that kind of looks at face value as bad news for telomerase. But <clears throat> I did my own meta-analysis just for the purpose of this presentation today because as I said, Elizabeth Blackburn made me mad. I know she's wrong and I just wanted to go through and approve it in the data. So I did my own meta-analysis. I looked at all studies between 2015 and 2017 that have looked at telomere length and, and risk of cancer. And I found 13 studies, not just two. I found 13 studies that looked at SNPs versus risk of cancer. And so when the cancer risk that they're looking at is what they think is long telomeres, seven of those 13 studies said that long telomeres were associated with increased risk of cancer. Short telomeres, only one study said that short telomeres was associated with increased risk of cancer. And then five papers said there was no association. Well, that, that looks like bad news, but that just, I've been in this business for 25 years or more, and I've no, I'm a cancer researcher, I know a lot about cancer, and it just didn't make sense to me. Long telomeres cause cancer is just nonsense. But <clears throat> all these studies, they missed a major point, and that is they never measured the telomeres of these people. In all these studies, they didn't look at the telomere lengths. They only looked at the presence of these SNPs. So I thought, okay, let me look to see if there's any studies that have looked at the length of the telomeres, not just the SNPs. And so I found 56 studies in 2015 to 2017 that have looked at, they, me, they actually measured the telomere lengths in all these patients and looked at their risk of cancer. All right, four of those studies showed that long telomeres cause cancer. But 42 of those studies show that short telomeres cause cancer. And remember, 
This is a whole new science. And this is, in fact, if there's ever any discrepancies between what Dr. Raphael and I say, it's only because this is such a new science that people haven't really figured it out. There's a lot of papers that are gonna contradict everything you ever find. So there's always gonna be some exceptions to the rule, but 42 out of 56 studies showed that short telomeres were what was causing, causing cancer, not long telomeres. Nine showed no association. And actually one, actually two if you go before 2015, have said that both long telomeres and short telomeres cause cancer. And I can believe that. I mean, that's, that everything causes cancer. But they said the only thing that doesn't cause cancer is the average telomere length. So, so if that's true or not true, I'm not going to dwell on that because only one or two publications have come out saying that so far. But 42 publications, <clears throat> 42 studies out of 56 have said that short telomeres cause cancer and only four out of 56 said that long telomeres cause cancer. So let me explain what's going wrong here. Why are these people that are doing the genome-wide association studies coming up with the wrong answer? And here's the logic. This is a logic problem they're making. <clears throat> you have a bunch of SNPs. There's only been eight or nine that have been identified that are associated with long telomeres. Those, they're associated with long telomeres. Those same SNPs are also associated with increased risk of cancer. But from anybody that's skilled in logic, that doesn't mean that long telomeres are causing the cancer. It means the SNPs are causing the cancer for some unknown reason, and the SNPs are also calling the long telomeres for some unknown reason, but that by no way means that long telomeres are causing cancer. And that's verified by looking at the studies that showed <clears throat> that when they actually measured the telomeres, long telomeres did not cause cancer. It was the short telomeres that did. It bothers me that Elizabeth Blackburn doesn't know about that. And I don't even know if she doesn't know about that. But it's not only, as far as I can tell, only Elizabeth Blackburn is going around saying that telomerase causes cancer. Everybody else that says it is saying it because she said it. Okay, all the studies point to the idea that short telomeres cause cancer. All right, now that I got that out of the way, I'd like to tell you what's really going on with telomeres and telomeres and cancer. This is what a lot of scientists, research scientists, have known for quite some time. Well, first, we all know that every cancer that's ever been discovered was caused by a mutation. Mutations are what cause cancer. Well, so does long, well, I, I, got, I forgot about some slides, important slides here. <clears throat> there's actually no clinical data. Nobody, there's not a single scientific publication where anybody has, at least not since 2005 and the ones before 2005 that have been since retracted, but nobody has done an experiment where they lengthened telomeres in animals or humans and showed that they got increased risk of cancer. In fact, quite the opposite. Every effort to do so has failed, including Dr. Rhonda Pennell's experiment. Dr. Rhonda Pennell wasn't trying to show that lengthening telomeres causes aging, or it gets, prevents aging. He was trying to show that they would get cancer, and they didn't. The exact opposite happened. I think that's why he left and went to MD Anderson. It's because he, he was a cancer researcher, but he, he proved to himself that, that Lengthening telomeres did not increase the risk of cancer, it failed. <clears throat> For every study that's published in the literature that suggests, without data, that telomerase might cause cancer, or that long telomeres might cause cancer, there's at least 10 studies that show that lack of telomerase causes cancer. It's really, we've all had this problem with, we have cancer because we don't have telomerase. We have, we get cancer because our telomeres get really short and cause some problems. And that's the bad things are short telomeres. And this is where I was coming back to before. We know that cancers are caused by mutations. All cancers are caused by mutations. And now many papers have shown that short telomeres are a major cause of mutations in chromosome rearrangements, which are just larger mutations that you can actually see in the microscope. But short telomeres actually cause high incidence of mutations. They also cause something called chromotherpes. It's a brand new word for me. I've only learned it in the last two years. 
But this is where people now with sequencing genomes are finding that in cells that have really critically short telomeres, and, and especially when they have cancer, they have mutations, clusters of like 100 mutations, chromosome rearrangements, all in the same place. So the telomeres, the short telomeres, are causing the chromosomes to just fall apart, just like the shoelace, the caps on your shoelaces do when they get really short. Your shoelaces fall apart. These mutations are causing the cancers. It's, it's not the only way to get cancer. You can also get cancer from ionizing radiation, et cetera, and things like that, but telomeres are a major cause of the mutations. Did I skip something there? Yeah. <clears throat> Also, telomeres, short telomeres, weaken the immune system. Our immune system is our best defense against cancer, and short telomeres mess those up. We, they don't, not, our, our immune system can't help fight our cancer anymore when the telomeres get really short. So we gotta keep telomeres long to keep our immune system strong. Short telomeres cause metastasis. Cancers are caused by mutations. Well, they don't necessarily spread to other parts of the body until additional mutations occur. And those additional mutations are occurring because telomeres are short. I mean, if we could lengthen telomeres in cancers, that would probably give our cancers a less likelihood chance of metastasizing. And we don't know that yet because nobody's done an experiment like that yet. It's all, as I said, we're still in research. And then short telomeres allow cancers to survive whatever you hit them with. We all heard about cancers, chemotherapy, getting rid of a cancer, and the cancer coming back. Well, they're coming back because of additional mutations that made them survive the treatment that you were hitting them with. The short telomeres are increasing the mutation rate so high that the cancers are coming back because of short telomeres. I believe we need to keep the telomeres long and, and do something to, to keep them long to, so that we can improve our ability to fight our cancers. Now, I already talked about my own meta-analysis, meta but there's been lots of meta-analysis now done where there's so many studies, and I only looked at from 2015 to 17. Now this is, this is a study, I think the year is somewhere on there, but I don't see it, but it was before 2015, <clears throat> where they did a study, looked at all the papers that were looking at telomere length and cancer, and came up with the conclusion that short telomeres are associated with increased risk of cancer. This is old news. Elizabeth Blackburn should know this. Now, another study just came out just three weeks ago saying the exact same thing. When people actually measure the telomeres and just don't play with this new toy called genome-wide associated studies, you actually see that short telomeres cause cancer. And I'd like to go in one step further to make this kind of more obvious that long telomeres and telomeres don't cause cancer by talking about the fact that there are some animals that don't have any detectable aging. This is something new, but the first one that discovered was lobsters. Lobsters, I mean, nobody cared how long an animal lived until the time of Darwin. Then, then people started saying, well, let's see how long they live, but the only way to see is to be there when they're born, put them in a cage or aquarium, and then watch to see how long they live. And 150 years later, we're still seeing some of these animals are still alive and healthy and kicking happily ever after. Well, a study came out showing the reason why lobsters live so long is because they have telomerase produced in every cell of their body, not just their reproductive cells like humans do. They have it in every cell of their body. Well, Elizabeth Blackburn would tell you these lobsters must get cancer pretty bad with telomerase in their cells and having long telomeres, but in fact, they don't. They rarely get cancer, and they rarely get other diseases. And it's not just lobsters. This has now been shown with clams, tortoises, humpback whales, fish, and some birds, or some fish and some birds. All these animals have been shown to have telomerase produced in all their cells. They don't have any telomere shortening. They have no detectable aging and they rarely get cancer and other diseases. Charles Darwin had a pet tortoise named Harriet. She had just died recently at 180 years old. She didn't die of aging, she died of some virus infection. Humpback whale was discovered with a harpoon in it, and they carbon dated that harpoon and it was 130 years old. 
these animals are living a long time. And we don't know how long they live because most animals don't have like rings on a tree that we can count to measure how old they are. The exception is clams. Clams have these stripes on their shells. They get a new stripe every year. Well, lo and behold, people are now finding clams over 500 years old, all because they have telomerase produced in all their cells and they have long telomeres. They're not getting cancer. They're not getting other diseases. They're living long, healthy lives. So, <clears throat> bottom lines. Telomerase does not cause cancer. The lack of telomerase causes cancer. We've known beyond a shadow of a doubt for a long time that this is true. It, it's something that we have to solve. And I, for 25 years, this has been, been one of my missions. Because when I was a cancer researcher and I got moved into telomere biology, I thought this is a way to cure, prevent, fight, whatever you want to call it, cancer, by making telomeres long. And that's why I get mad when somebody like Elizabeth Blackburn tries to say that that's not true, the opposite is true. I've just spent 25 years trying to find a cure for cancer by lengthening telomeres, by inducing telomeres. We need to keep telomeres long. That's the bottom line. <clears throat> If anybody would like to see any of these papers that I talked about, including all of those 56 studies or 13 studies on the G G uh, genome wide association studies, you can get these papers full text at my company website, which is www.sierrasci.com slash papers. I just want to end the nonsense. I want to make all the data available to everybody that really is still questioning this fact that telomerase might cause cancer. And I don't normally spend time doing something like this, contradicting some Nobel Prize winning scientist. But as I said, this really attacks everything I believe in. And, and I just want to see it stopped. With that, I'd like to go back to what I'm really here to talk about. And I'm going to do it in a little shorter time than normal. I want to talk about telomeres, telomerase, and aging. And I believe one of the <laughs> biggest things that aging causes is cancer, so we're still not removed totally from the cancer. But you may remember I left you with, how do we go from here to here, okay? And the way to do that is to induce telomerase. So telomerase is a good thing. We want to produce telomerase in our cells to make us healthy, make our telomeres longer. And the way my company is doing this is we know that telomerase is produced in our reproductive cells, and we know that it's there because there's a gene for telomerase. Just like there's a gene for eye color and hair color, there's a gene for telomerase that's producing telomerase. And next to every gene, there's a regulatory element. It's like a light switch that turns the lights on and off in this room. It's more like a dimmer switch, but it turns, it regulates the production of a gene. How much of the, like in this case, how much telomerase gets produced by that gene. In our reproductive cells, that regulatory switch is fully on. That's why our reproductive cells don't have telomere shortening. That's why our children are born younger than we are, is because the gene is turned on in our reproductive cells. In every other cell of our body, apparently in some there's discrepancies, and I know Dr. Jeff Raphael uh, disagreed with this, and we don't know 100% certain, but the data is looking to me like we shut telomerase off at the eight cell stage. When it, just before the blastocyst stage, when you're still an eight cell embryo, seven out of those cells will shut off telomerase. And one will stay on, and that becomes your primordial germ cells. But in all of our cells, the gene is shut off. So that's what causes us to start aging so that we can survive as a species. That protein is called a repressor. And what my company has been doing for many years now is we are looking for chemicals or natural products or anything that will bind to that repressor, dislodge it, and allow that gene to turn on. We've tested over 500,000 different chemicals and natural products, and the strongest thing we have found so far is something called TAM-818, for telomerase activating molecule 818. That's the strongest thing we've found so far. It is 80 to 300 times, depending on who does the measurements, because Measuring telomerase activity is art. It's not easy to do, but the range is somewhere between 80 and 300 times more potent 
than any other telomerase inducer you've ever heard of. <clears throat> so it's very potent. And we are still continuing to look for stronger things because we want to get this tug of war to the level where it's actually at least a tie. This is where hopefully we see aging stop. And we can produce a telomerase inducer potent enough to do this. Now, the TAM818 is still a really good thing because it's slowing down the rate of aging. But it's not stopping it, but slowing it down is still a very good thing. But we, I want to see us stop it and I want to see us reverse it. I want to see us get more people on this side of the tug of war to start lengthening our telomeres. And if humans are anything like Dr. Rhonda Pinnell's mice, we're going to see aging reversed in every way imaginable. Unlike anything else you've ever seen, nothing, every time you hear about somebody coming up with a cure for aging, they don't do any of these things. Okay, I also want to talk about a new thing that we're doing, we've, we've done, we've been very successful at. It's gene delivery, and it's also known as gene therapy. And what we're doing is I want you to think of a human cell as a soap bubble. And then I want you to think about there's another soap bubble around, and inside that soap bubble is the gene for telomerase. And we all know that when we see soap bubbles floating in the air, when they come into contact with one another, they fuse to become one, and the insides of both of them become one. <clears throat> so by doing this delivery method of these like small soap bubbles, delivering to our cells, we can get the telomerase gene into the cells, and that gene then produces telomerase. And it produces a lot of telomerase. It produces so much telomerase in our assays, in our tests at Sierra Sciences, that it's equivalent to having two people pulling to shorten versus 60 people to lengthen. Okay, this is a really, really potent way of producing telomerase to lengthen telomeres. We are right now building a large-scale production facility in Fiji Island, and we will be ready to start testing this on humans. December of 2017, so before the end of this year. I'm really excited because we're going to get to answer some of these big questions. Because, as I said, there's a lot, it's a new science, a lot of studies going on. Nobody's done the real experiments to lengthen telomeres and see what happens. We can only guess from animal studies and in vitro studies. But we would now be able to actually see what will happen. And I believe that when we start treating people with this gene therapy, we will see people getting younger and healthier in every way imaginable. Not just looking, not just more energy, but they will start looking younger and being healthier and fitter. So I'm really excited about that. I'm looking forward to that. I want to end with a, well, it's, gonna, it's, not, it's not a fast ending, but I just want to go through the data that shows that telomere lengthening is the best thing we can do for us. And what is the data that says that? And I'm going to go through these quickly and then summarize them in a little more detail. But one, by lengthening telomeres, we have extended the Hayflick limit. Nothing else has done that. We've reversed aging in human tissues. We reversed aging in mice. We, we have found that telomeres control the other targets. And I've got to say, when I say we, it doesn't always mean my lab. I'm talking about scientists in the field, because my labs didn't do all this stuff. But let's talk about extending the Hayflick limit first. I remember the Hayflick limit? Cells level off after a period of time. Well, when we treat these cells with telomerase gene therapy, we completely obliterate that Hayflick limit. This is real data from my lab showing <clears throat> that the cells just keep on growing and growing. They have not lost growth control. They still don't grow just without wanting to. They are still only stimulated when you provide them with a stimulate. So they're not anywhere near cancer. They're actually the opposite of cancer. They're very, very non-cancer cells. They just can divide more time. They have more ride tickets. Remember that analogy. Next, I want to talk about reversed aging in human tissues. A colleague of mine who actually I shared the United States Inventor of the Year Award with, Walter Funk, did the following experiment. He, he grew human skin on the back of a mouse. He did young and old skin, and he also treated with and without telomerase. 
And in all cases, when he treated the old skin with telomerase gene therapy, he found that the human skin became visibly younger in every way imaginable, and it behaved younger in every way imaginable. Old skin could blister easily, it can have a lot of other things. This all disappeared when he took old skin lengthened telomeres. This is true age reversal at the skin level. He also looked at aging markers, 30 different biomarkers of aging. He found every single one of them was reversed. The expression pattern went from an old expression pattern to a young expression pattern. This is almost 20 years ago. This is really old data right now. And why people are still arguing that this is something wrong to do is just amazing. And as both Dr. Raphael and I talked about, uh, Dr. Rhonda Pennell using telomere lengthening gene therapy technology, lengthened telomeres in engineered mice that were designed to age like humans, and he saw age reversal. This is his paper. Uh, the title doesn't exactly say it, but the press releases that he did were telomerase reverses aging process. And <clears throat> he saw, as Dr. Raphael showed, a 33% increase in telomere lengths. He saw fertility. Old mice could suddenly breed again. He saw spleen size return, sense of smell, which is thought to be a function of brain's function, smells of, uh, controlled by the brain, came back, uh, saw a restoration of brain size and function, and they saw a threefold increase in survival after 25 weeks. The mice were living longer, healthier, and, and being younger. They looked younger, too, in every way imaginable. This is now just a short video with, uh, I don't know if Diane Sawyer is a big name here in, in Japan, but she's a big name in the United States as a news reporter interviewing Dr. Now, Rhonda Pennell. eternal Penel. youth. Is it in a cage around the corner? News tonight of a breakthrough for some pioneering mice. But we always wonder, what does a fountain <coughs> of youth for rodents <coughs> reveal for humans? Here's Sharon Alfonsi reporting. I feel tremendous. In the movie Cocoon, it's a swimming pool that turns back the clock for a group of senior citizens. But now, researchers have found a way not just to stop, but reverse the aging process. The key is something called a telomere. We all have them. They're the tips or caps of your chromosome, seen here in yellow. This is what it looks like in a young adult. But as you grow older, the telomeres become damaged and frayed. And as they stop working, we start aging, experiencing things like hearing and memory loss. Scientists took mice who were prematurely aged, added an enzyme, and essentially turned their telomeres back on. You can see it before the enzyme, after. <clears throat> their brain function improved, their fertility was restored. It was a, a remarkable uh, reversal of the aging process. Look at this picture. The mouse on the right has bad skin, gray hair, and is balding. But the one on the left had its telomeres flipped back on. And you could see that uh, essentially you now have a dark coat color, uh, that the hair uh, is restored, that the coat uh, has a nice healthy sheen to it. Even more dramatic, the change in brain size. This is before the mice had 75% of a normal brain, like a patient with severe Alzheimer's. But after the telomeres were reactivated, the brain returns to normal size. As for humans, while it is just one factor, <clears throat> scientists now say by looking at our blood cells and measuring those telomeres, you can get a better idea of how well you'll age. The longer the telomere, the better the chances for a more graceful aging. But as for tinkering with them and turning back our aging process, researchers say we still have a long way to go. Sharon Alfonsi, ABC News, New York. Well, that's pretty exciting, and we don't have a long way to go. I think we're very close to seeing a lot of Dr. Raphael's patients being able to be treated, your patients that are suffering from telomeropathies being treated. And I think that the world is going to be a much nicer place when we find a way to prevent the number one most dangerous thing to humans, and that's short telomeres. It's, there's still some icing on the cake. Dr. Raphael talked about this too. Dr. Rhonda Pennell also showed that keeping telomeres long seems it can have some control over some of the other theories on aging, more specifically mitochondria dysfunction and oxidative stress. He found that these were reduced when the telomeres were kept long. Dr. Rhonda Pennell said aging theories are unified. He called telomeres are the kingpin of aging. <clears throat> and this is a cancer researcher 
that believed that telomerase was going to cause cancer who was saying this kind of stuff. So nothing else has ever done this. You've heard about NAD things, things that affect NAD levels. You've heard about resveratrol. All these things are being advertised as curing aging, re reversing aging, but none of them really do. Not a single one of them have done a single one of those things listed right there. <coughs> Only lengthening telomeres has done all this stuff. To learn more, I recommend you read my two books. They're mostly written to address all the questions people ask when I give presentations. So, you know, really good questions. Curing Aging was the first book that I published a few years ago, and then this new book just got launched just this coming week, actually. I thought it was going to be launched today, but it's going to be later this week. And I think some of you have already gotten copies. I think there's going to be some copies available here. But I recommend reading these. I also recommend looking at the, watching the movie The Immortalist, because I do spend time in that documentary talking about the role that telomeres play in, in cancer and aging. And I want to thank, again, the Institute for Advanced Telomere Medicine and also Defy Time, my company, Sierra Sciences, and all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Bill Andrews. どうぞ皆様、今一度盛大な拍手をお送りください。